Welcome to the House of Truth. Today we're today we're going we're going to we're going to talk about how to prepare for the tribulation. What is the best way to prepare for the tribulation? There's a lot of people have been doing this. They uh they 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 stack they stack up they get buy tribulation survival kits. Basically, they they stack up they hoard a bunch of stuff. They sometimes buy buy uh have land outside their outside where they live, out and secluded out in the woods somewhere secluded. Are they gonna build? Are they got, we're gonna build this little cabin or something of the sort, and so on and so forth. And they got this plan. So when the tribulation hits, that they're gonna survive it when the tribulation comes. So they're preparing for it. But we're gonna look and see what the Word of God, the Bible says about preparing for the tribulation, the best way to do that. And we're starting here by talking about one of our key verses that tell us about the tribulation that's coming in the days leading up to it. And that's here in Luke chapter 17, verses 24 through 29. For as the, light, for as the lightning that lingers, one, lingers that lights out of one part of heaven, under heaven, shines in the other part of heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. And first he, must, but first he must suffer many things and reject in his generation. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall be the days of the Son of Man. They had eaten, drank, and they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also was in the days of Lot. They had eaten, they drank, they bought and they sold, they planted, they built it. At the same, but the same day that Lot went out, out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Okay, so the first thing you need to know, you know is notice that we talk about the days of man, the son of man, plural. This is a reference to the destruction that comes during the tribulation. The days of Noah were days of destruction. The days of Lot were days of destruction for the for, for Sodom and Gomorrah. And Noah, of course, for the whole world with the flood. And the son of man is going to come suddenly. A sudden event's going to happen. So our pattern to know to know how to prepare for the tribulation is to see how Noah and Lot, how Noah and Lot were were uh, taken care of during during these 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 massive destructive events during their day, which, which were judgments of God on, on the wicked. So how are the righteous taken care of? We'll look at those a little bit later. That's the first thing you need to know about about this preparing for the tribulation. Now, the next thing, we're going to continue on here in Luke chapter 17, verses 30, 30 through 33, where Yeshua, where Yeshua or Jesus, Yeshua, continues on to say, Thus it shall be in the day of the, when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which is upon the housetop, he which shall be upon the housetop of his stuff in the house, and not come down to take it away. And he is in the field, and likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Okay, so when this day when this day comes, it happens suddenly. There's instruction that's swiftly following. And notice the instructions. You're, if you're up on the roof of your house, you're just to get you're just to get out, out, out of your house and flee for your life as quick as you can. If you're out in the field, you don't go back to your house. So your stuff that you've been hoarding is not going to leave with you. If you try to go back and get that stuff to seek, if you try to seek to seek to save your life by getting your tribulation survival kit, your go bag, whatever you might have, that's in your house, you're going to lose your life. The destruction's going to overtake you. But those, but th but those who just run away and trust God to take care of them are going to preserve their lives. So that's the so, so that's the next thing Yahshua tells us about preparing for the tribulation. That's not doing you any good to stack up a bunch of stuff in your house because you're not going to have time to get it anyways when, when it starts. You just got you just got to run for your life. Now we continue on Luke chapter seventeen, verse thirty-four through thirty-seven. I tell you, in the morning there should be two men in the bed and one taken, and the other should be left. Two women should be grinding together, the one taken, the other left. 
two shall be in the field, one taken, the other left. And they answered and said to them, Where, Lord? And he said, Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be, get, will be gathered together. Will be gathered together. So we're going to start here at the bottom here for a moment. That, so, so this is talking about, you know, we're talking about eagles, eagles or, or, or birds of prey in general gathering together where there's a body. They're talking about a bunch of bodies coming to, coming to eat on the de get, eat on the dead. It means complete destruction. It's going to kill, it's going to wipe out. It's going to kill everyone who doesn't flee. So there's two in the bed. One reason why one would be taken and one be left and taken could mean destroyed. And, and, and left could be, mean they survive. Is one wants to go get their stuff. And the other one just fled for their lives. You know, uh, if they're on the first story, maybe jumped out the window and ran and ran to the dark, whatever. And there were two women grinding together. The same thing. One, the one, the one is destroyed. The one that went back to get their their tribulation survival kit, their go bag, or whatever they had. The one that would left to be the one that ran away. In the field, the one that ran, the one that ran away and just trusted God to take care of them is the one that's going to be left. But the one who, the one who ignored these instructions of Yeshua and returned to their house, is going to be destroyed. And of course, the, there's enough that. It's not uncommon in the Bible for something. Sometimes things have a double application, which happens a lot. Which happens, uh, which happens often. So there's a, there's perhaps another meaning to this, which we'll discuss later. But in the context that we're looking at right now, that's the thing. So do not. It does not do any good to hoard stuff in your house, eat, or even have a go bag. You do not have time to go back for it, even if you're on the roof of your house. Or sleep in your bed. You don't have time to go get it. It is get out and, and run away as quickly as possible. That's your only chance of survival. Even that little delay will cost you your life. Okay, now we're going to go to Revelations chapter 8. We're going to look in Revelations about some of the things that happened during the tribulation. And see how these plant, uh, some of these other plans people have uh, stack up against them. See if see how see how effective they really are going to be working. So we start in Revelation chapter eight verses five through seven. And the angel and the and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire and cast it on the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels said, the seven turns prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded. There followed hell and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Okay, so first, so so these people, these people go out and built, got somewhere in the woods, and built themselves some sort of cabin, some secluded area in the woods. First of all, have a one third chance, a one three chance of 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 being destroyed in the fire in this fire. Them and their cabin are, are going to go. Them and their cabin are going to be burnt, and they're going and they're going to be killed by fire if they do this. Now, if they're out, if they're out in some area where there's not trees, and they're in you know some plains or uh, a step the steps or something, some perhaps wilderness area where there's a lot of grass, and perhaps they think you know they can raise farm animals out, you know some goats out there or something, you know a few sheep to keep for food and, and wool and whatever. They're all of them are going to die, be burnt. But the one, but it's not just the ones who are who are caught by the fire. It's going to have a problem. I mean, like here in the U.S., we have a lot of big national forests and stuff. But when one third of the trees burnt, if your third's not one, if you're not one of those one third, the world's not going to sit by idle and go, "Gosh, yes, we can't make any more furniture or nothing or anything," because you know one third, you know, we we were going to get them out of that forest and that forest burnt. No, they're just going to go to another. They're going to go to another forest and get them. And it may be where you are. So at best, you may have a 50-50 chance. Of picking a place that is not destroyed by fire, at best. But that's not the only problem that can occur. As we're going to see as we continue on here in Revelations chapter eight, verses eight through eleven, the second angel said, "There was a great mountain burning with fire, cast as it were a great mountain burning with fire, cast to the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood." 
And the third part of the creatures of the sea and had, died, and had life and died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the angel said, there fell a great star from heaven as it were burning, as it were a lamp that fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Many people died of the waters because they were made bitter. Okay, so now we're going to see now, so now there's a, another, the biggest problem, the biggest problem people are going to have is, is just is just getting plain, clean water. You, it's it's virtually impossible to store up to store up seven years worth of water, and especially if you're talking about more than one person, say say for a family. And you know, and the solution that these a lot of people have is to go. They're going to they're going they're going to they're going they're going to they're going to they're going to get a, they're going to go somewhere to spring, a river. Maybe, maybe even want underground water, or perhaps, or, or perhaps they're they're going to live on a boat out on the sea, and and have desalinization, so they can make fresh water out of the sea water all the time. Well, here's the problem: if you're out there on the sea, one third of it is gonna is gonna is gonna become blood, and you're not gonna drink it; you're gonna die of thirst. And if your idea, and if your solution. If your solution was to live off to live off catching fish and, and, and whatever out of the sea, your food supply is going to be cut off. If you were if you didn't die from if you didn't die from thirst thirst if you didn't if you didn't die from thirst you would die from starvation. But more than that, those those ships that are in that part of the sea are all going to be sunk. So you don't have to worry about any one of those things. You're going to die from drowning. So that's. Not, so, so that's no, so that's no good. And of course, you don't know which third it is. And like the other, like the other things we talked about, the world's not going to go. The rest of the world's not going to go. Oh darn! I guess we're just going to die. We're gonna not having seafood, and you know, and and sh you know, our you know, our third, uh, and a third of our ships are gone. And you know, oh, what are we going to do? No, they're going to come out and look for your ship to take it from you. If you're not in that two thirds. They're gonna come out to where you're where, where you're out. They're gonna be start searching out white areas where they didn't normally go to look for food from the sea, fish, and whatever. And you're likely to be found. So again, maybe a 50 chance, 50 50 chance of picking the right part on the ocean to be at, where, where you're where you're not where you're not affected by this by by, by this judgment on the on the earth. Now. But this gets. But let's suppose you're not out to see. You're you're on land. Well, you got this. So they so people have this scenario here. Maybe even maybe there maybe even their plans to go out in the desert. So they're not worried about the trees burning up and the grass. But wherever they're at, they gotta have water. If you if you don't got like a big spot like sea, salt water that you could desalinate, you have to have fresh water. Well, here's the problem. A third of that water is going to become. And notice it's not just the rivers, it's the fountains of water, it's the underground source that springs and stuff come up from and you know bitter here means poisonous you know perhaps even radioactive there is a star called wormwood and that's what its name is and you know the thought is if it, it'll be it, it's it, it's probably it's, it's it, a lot of these stars are kind of radioactive and it, it hits you know the chunk of that hits it's going to make it it's going to make everything radioactive regardless it's going to kill you to drink the water. And again, so one third of the water, first of all, you're, you, you have a one in three chance of being that part where the water is. And notice where the water is may be separate place from where the trees were. I mean, that would cover now two thirds of the areas. One third where the trees were, one third of the water. There may or may not be, there may be some overlap, maybe there's not. So now, you, you don't have any water, and, and, not, and this would just be where the trees are too. This be out in the desert as well. So you're out there. So you're out there. So you're out there, and you don't have any water. You're gonna die. But if you smoke, you're in the area that, where there's no water. Same thing as before. Uh, the rest of the world's not gonna go. Oh my gosh, well, I guess well, I guess we're all gonna die. you know a bunch of us are gonna die. No, they're gonna go look for where water is and go there. And you're going to lose your entire solitude and all the stuff you were counting on to keep you safe. So again, at best, a 50-50 chance of you picking the right spot. 
with the right spot being available to you. I mean, we don't know where these things are. I mean, why, why if all the one third of trees are North America and you're North America, you know, you're out of luck. So, you know, include all of North America. We don't know. So now we're going to continue on. And we're going to look a little further in Revelation, the later. This is all early on in the tribulation. A little later now here in tribulation in Revelation chapter 16, verses 7 through 20. And the seventh angel poured out his vial in the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and not and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the city of the nations fell, and great Babylon came to rooms before God to give her the cup of the, of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Okay, so first of all, some people thought maybe, that, well, okay, the ships are going to sink. I'm going to be on an island. The islands are going to sink also. Now, I'm not sure how big it has to be where it's, you know, you know how big it has to, you know, be, because technically continents are islands, but it doesn't mean them. You know, I don't know if Greenland's too big and it's not going to be counted or Australia. You know, we, I don't know where, I don't know where the, the line is, but certainly any small secluded island you're on trying to hide out in, is going, to, is going to qualify. You're going to drown. The mountains are going to are going to crumble to dust. If you're out there hiding in the, hiding hiding in the mountains in the desert, you're you're you are going to die. And it's notice it's every mountain and every island. You don't even get a one in three chance at this on this business. So your chances, your chances of picking the right spot where none of these things happen is actually very small or maybe even non-existent, depending on how, on how, these, how these plagues are actually spread out. There may be, there's nowhere on earth. But if there is, you don't know where it is. And, it, and it's certain that all these people claim to know all these places all over the earth can't all be right. So, so this is so this whole idea of buying a bunch of stuff and hoarding it, even putting, even buying, getting some property somewhere and hoarding it out there. So you you, you do just run away, but you run away to where that's at. If you try to seek to save your life this way, you're going to lose it, like Yeshua said. But this brings us to another question altogether. Are we, are, should we even be trying to survive the tribulation? Where are we called to even survive in the first place? Let's look and see what the Word of God says. Here in Revelation chapter 9 again, I mean chapter 6, we're going to go to verses 9 through 11. Back to our seals and take a look. Actually, it was trumpets earlier. But we're going to these seals to take a look. And he opened a fifth seal, and I saw under this altar the souls that were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held. They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? White robes were given every one of them, and said to them they should, that they should rest yet a little while, for a little season, and to their fellow servants, also their brethren, should be killed as they were and should be fulfilled. Okay, so first of all, I want you to notice there are there are believers in the tribulation. Well, we know because they're slain for the word of God and the testimony. So there is martyrs during the tribulation. Lots of them, as a matter of fact. And notice that there's that says their there's souls, they have not been resurrected, these people. Also notice their souls are alive and conscious of God and talking to him. They're not in some sort of so-called soul sleep. They're crying out to the Lord. Perhaps Yeshua, perhaps. But regardless, they're not in some sort of soul sleep.
And notice there's more to come. They're going to be killed. So now we're going to go forward to Re in Revelation chapter, chapter 12, the verses 14 through 17. And to the woman were given two great wings of an eagle, and she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth as it was a flood to the woman who might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, the earth opened her mouth and swallowed this blood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, we talked about this. We talked about this last year when I, when I, when I talked about the, um, when, I, when I talked about this, about the, about the tri tribulation during the fall holidays last year, Yom Teruah, which is what we're at right now. And this woman is Israel, plainly. And the remnant of her seed is who? Not those in Israel that are, are being held at Petra or 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 uh, also, also known as Basra, which literally means sheep pen. Petra meaning rock because it's carved out of rock there, who are, who are, who are there. But, the, but so not, not necessarily her physical seed, but those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Those, remember the other ones were, were bore witness to the, te, were, were bearing witness of the word of God and their testimony. These are keeping them as well. So this is believers and the Satan it's kind of, Satan tried to overthrow, over, tried to overthrow uh, the father, and he got cast down. And now he's he, 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 his main target are the believers. Now we're going to go forward to Revelation chapter fourteen, verses twelve through thirteen. So our tribulation survival is not looking good here. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Here's the the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from here from, from here on. Yea, says the Spirit, they may rest their labors and their works to follow them. The only people called blessed in the tribulation are those who die for the who die for keeping the commandments of God and the faith of, of Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus. Or Yeshua, if you prefer to use the Aramaic, we're not we're not we're not commanded to survive the tribulation. We're commanded to flee, so we're not so we're not destroyed under the wrath of God. But this is not God doing the destroying here. This is the this is this is the people that God's having wrath pouring His wrath on. They're destroying those who are following God. And He doesn't say He's going to protect us from the tribulation. No, indeed, indeed, he says more are going to be at, bunch die, more are going to be died. The, the Satan's going to make war on them, and those and the, and those who persevere and and die are blessed. So we're not so now we're not coming not to survive the tribulation. We're actually we're not we're not to feed, we're not to just throw our lives away, but we're but we're but we're commanded to continue. And become martyrs during a tribulation. So, trying to stack up and save your own stuff to save your own life during a tribulation is completely contrary to the commandments of Yeshua and the Word of God. Now, now we're going to address a particular thing because some of, some, of, some of them will make it through the whole tribulation and survive. And, and we talked about, and I talked about this last year. I talked about Yeshua setting up his kingdom. I, I have a lesson called that, and you can go in there. And I, I, think, I remember right. I got, I got charts. I got some charts and everything to help you keep track, keep keep track of the timeline. And there are some people who pass through the tribulation, in particular, the remnant of Israel that doesn't is not killed. Two out of three of them are going to be killed in the tribulation itself. By the way, according to Zechariah. But what about the one third who aren't? Well, let's understand that one third who's not. Let's see what happens to them. 
And first, we're going to we're going to we're going to look at Leviticus 27, 32, 33 to understand an expression and what it means. Concerning the tithe of the herd of the flock, what's, even whatsoever passes into the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. If he change it all, then both put in the chains there will be holy. It shall not be redeemed. Okay, so one in ten of the flock belongs to the Lord. Remember, Basra, the, we talked about the, the sheep pen. The flock, okay, is Israel. We'll see in a moment. So the point is, one in ten belong to the Lord. The rest do not. Well, let's just see what happens. Now we're going to see what that, what that has to do with the tribulation, with the time after the time, the, 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 those, those who survive the tribulation from among the people of Israel, that one third who's not killed. Let's take a look. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 34 through 38. I'll bring you out from the people and gather you, the, gather you out of the countries wherein you were scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm with a fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and, there will, and I will plead with you face to face. Like as I pled your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So I'll plead with you, says the Lord God. And I'll cause you to pass on the rod and I'll bring you into the, into the bond of the covenant. And I'll purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I'll bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they will not shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Now, the Bible does plainly say that the Exodus is coming where they will not say we, we came out of Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of the north country. In all, in all the lands where they were scattered to throughout the earth. But it's talking about the people of Israel. Look, if you're identifying with this group of people, why are you saying? You're saying you're a rebel, that you're transgressing against God, and you're not in the bond of the covenant. You're not to our observant. And, and that's, the, that's the covenant he's referring to here. And what's going to happen? Uh, he's going to pass under the rod. One in ten are going to come out of the wilderness. The, the other nine in ten are going to be destroyed. So after so now that one-third who... Out of that one third, they get that that when the, that when this is that when this gathering is finished, ninety percent of them or, or so are going to die in the wilderness. So if you say you're one of this, if, if you say you're one of these people, you are saying you are not you 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 are not under the bond of the covenant. You're not in covenant with him. That you're a rebel and you're a transgressor against him. And this certainly should not describe any believer, any follower of Yeshua. This is plainly not talking about us. It's some people who've rejected him. And they're given, are given an opportunity to submit to the rule of Messiah. Not people who are already submitting to his rule. And now we're looking at when, we're now down when this occurs. And how. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be, the heavens shall be sake, shaken. And then shall appear the Son of Man in the heaven and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds in with power and great glory. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a great trumpet. They shall gather all his elect to the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay. First of all, notice, what, when does this occur? After the tribulation. What happens? The Son of Man, Yeshua, is coming from the air to the earth. From the air to the earth. Try to remember that. Okay. Don't get that mixed up. He's coming. He's, he, he's in the... He, He's coming down to the earth. And, 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 and so after the tribulation, he's, he's going to gather these elect, these elect and see who will obey him from among them. And only a remnant of Israel is going to be saved. Two thirds or two out of three are going to die in the tribulation. Of the survivors, nine out of ten are going to die in the wilderness. They're going back to the wilderness 
where Moses took them. But this time, one in ten's coming out, and they will and that will be the one in ten that will actually keep his covenant. That will be in the bond of the covenant and do what it says. So, so is that it? There's just, there's just, the tribulation's coming. There's no escape, no chances. You're, you're probably not going to survive. Now I'm supposed to seek to survive. So there's no kind of preparations that can be made. Well, let's just see. Let's go look at the, look, go look at that, 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 those patterns Yeshua told us to look at. Referring to Noah. Noah and the flood and Lot with Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to start with Noah and the flood. What happened? What is the pattern that was there? In Genesis chapter 7, verses 17 through 21, we're told. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and was lifted above the earth. The waters prevailed, were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills, they're under the whole heaven, were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the, the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died upon the earth that moved upon died that moved upon the earth, both fowl of cattle and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creeps in the earth, and every man. Okay, first thing I want you to notice when the judgment of God began to come down, the ark was lifted above the earth. Where's the where's the death and destruction on the earth? It, it's lifted to where twenty five feet, fifteen cubits is about to, is right at twenty five feet above the destruction. So a little smidgen over twenty five feet. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's like twenty five feet ten inches. But anyways, it's a little, around twenty five feet above the highest mountain. The ark is above. Everyone who's in the ark is saved. Those, those who, th those, the righteous are lifted up off the earth. The wicked are destroyed on the earth. The, God pours his destruction on the earth, not on the righteous. Are they aware of the destruction's going on? Of course they are. But they're not being destroyed. They're lifted above it. So notice the separation of the righteous and the wicked. The righteous again taken above, the then the destruction comes. When the destruction comes down, the righteous are taken off the earth, are taken off the earth and not destroyed in the destruction. Now let's go to now let's go to Genesis chapter 19, verses 15 through 17. And let and let's just and let's see what happened in the case now of Lot with Sodom. When the morning arose, and the angels hastened Lot, saying, Rise, take your wife and your two daughters, and which are here, lest you be consumed in iniquity of the city. But why linger? The men laid the late, late the men laid his laid hand laid upon him his hand, and the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, Lord being merciful to him, and brought him forth, and sent him without the city. And it came to pass that brought him abroad, and he said, Escape for your life, look not behind you. Neither stay you at all in the plain. Escape to the mountain to be consumed. Okay, so so what do we see here? Are we, we see intervention again. We see we see that remember Noah had to build the ark. Lot has to do something to, to escape. And notice both of them are being told to escape the, the judgment of God upon the wicked. We're told to escape God's judgment. We're told to escape his wrath. This is not escaping persecution. The believer, the believers in the tribulation who were blessed did not, did not, of course they tried to escape because that's what Yeshua said. They first came once they escaped to another, but at the end, their, when their escape was take the mark or die, they took, they died. We're not, so, so escaping persecution at the point of committing sin, we're not commanded to do. But escaping the judgment of God, we're commanded as they are here, as we were in both cases. And where is it to escape the mountain? 
where's the destruction going to be at? The plain. The mount there's there to go there to go above the area of destruction. Again, the, the righteous are the righteous are taken up and destruction is below them. They're not part of the in the area of destruction. They're they're above it. Well, let's see what let's see what can let's see what happens here as we continue sell this plays out for a lot as we continue here in just chapter 19 and verse 18 through 22. And Lot said to them, Not so, my lord. Behold now, your servant. No, oh, now your servant has found grace in your sight, and you have magnified your mercy, which you have shown me and saved my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now the city is near, the city is near to flee into, and is a, is a little one. Oh, let me escape there! Is it not a little one? And my my soul shall live. He said, "See, I've accepted you concern this thing also. I will not overthrow the city for that which you have spoken. Haste you." Escape there, for I can do nothing. I cannot do anything until you come. Till you come there. Therefore, the name of that city was called Zoar. Zor. Now, look at this. I'll notice grace. Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So did Lot. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Lot's called a righteous man. And this is the reason for the mercy. And the saving of their life, but Lot's thing is he he, he he so he asked for a substitute for the mountain. He's not he's not trying to make his own plan, come with his own thing. He asks he's he, he's old. He's perhaps afraid he can't make it there, or the wicked men you know, the wicked men will, will will catch him first. So he asked for a little one, so another one he can go to. And notice they grant this, but it's a substitute for the mountain. Because the picture again is being taken off the area above the raise, being taken above the area of destruction, and this and the destruction coming down. So you're not in the where the destruction is. You're above it. And notice they cannot start the destruction until he gets there to that place of safety. God does not take collateral damage. He told he told he, he, he told Abraham. Abraham talked was he was spared those city for ten. If Abraham had went further, perhaps he would have spared it just for Lot's sake. So the so the pattern is the pattern is the righteous escape the judgment of God that comes upon the wicked by taking taking above the area of destruction off the earth. Now we're going to see the same thing here in First Thessalonians. Chapter four, verses seventeen through—I mean, verses fourteen through seventeen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so even them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of God, which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with them. All right, notice again. Remember, we're talking about those tribulation saints who died? They're going to get new bodies. They're going to come with him. And when, and when Jesus and when Jesus goes, God will bring with Jesus. When Jesus comes, remember, what's the direction? From the air to the earth. From the air to the earth. Well, what, well, what, so, so what about us who are alive at this place when this occur? who are alive? What about us? Well, what, what's it say? Those of us who are, who, who are down the earth, not, the, so it's, so it's down the earth, not just those souls who were killed during the tribulation, but, but the ones who were dead before this point. Are going to be raised up and, and taken and taken into the air, and us who are alive, we're told in Corinthians fifteen that we're going to get glorified bodies as well, are also going to be in the air and be with him for and meet and meet him. So notice it's us going from the, not him coming from the air to the earth, but us going from from the earth to the air to meet him, us being lifted up above the air above the earth before the the wrath of God. Is pour down the earth to destroy it in judgment. 
And this word here, caught together, caught up, it is our posal, our posal, our posal. And it mean, and it's the word Trent, and it means to be snatched away, to be caught up, like to be like perhaps like a like an assertion, like, like I got perhaps even like an, a rescue mission, a rescue mission, like where the uh, uh, military group, like the Navy SEALs or whatever, comes in and grabs someone that's been kidnapped and whisks them away to safety. Okay. And that, and, and, and that, that, that's the Greek word I gave you, our proposal. The, the Latin word for that is in the Latin Vulgate, it's your Latin translation, is rapturo. It's where we get the English word rapture from. So, really, the word rapture is literally here in this text in verse 17. It just doesn't use the, the word rapture here. It, but if it said, we'll be raptured, it would mean the exact same thing. They just chose to use caught up in the translation here because they went directly from the Greek instead of going from the Latin. Trans, instead of going from a translation to the translation, they went from the original language Greek. So they, they put the word caught up, but they could have used the word raptured and it wouldn't have meant the exact same thing. So, so the righteous are raptured or caught up into the air before the destruction begins. Just like Noah, just like Lot. We're lifted above the destruction first. Now, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And take a, and, and take a look at this. And see about this day, because there's, there's all these things like a, like, like a thief in the night. There's a movie called that and stuff. And, but let's just see. Are, again, are we just kind of helpless here? And when it comes, it comes. There's nothing we can do to prepare. Well, let's just see about that idea. And as everybody going, every believer, let's just see what let's just see what the word God says about this. In First Thessalonians chapter five, verses one through five, it says this: "For the times and seasons, brethren, I need not to write you, for you know perfectly, perfectly that the Lord of day so comes a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction shall come upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape." But but you, brethren, are not in darkness, for that, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. And so first of all, it's only coming as a thief in the night for those who are not prepared. Those who think everything's A-OK -okay, going about their lives like we saw Noah, like we saw in the days of Noah and Lot, where everyone just getting married and going on, and just you know carrying out on, on business as usual, with no clue of what's coming. They're going to be overtaken. As a, he's going to take them as a thief of night, but it's not to take us. We've been warned, we've been told, and 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 and, for, and my lesson for Yom for Yom Kippur. I will go over some of the signs to look for. But but so we're to be there because we we're not to be clueless like those who do, those who are walking in darkness, not in the light of God's word. OK, let's well, let's continue on and see what and, and, see, and see what and see what it tells us about this, not being clueless in this business. We continue on in first Corinthians chapter five, and verses six through eleven. Let us therefore not sleep as others as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, they that be drunk and are drunk in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. For we awake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, cover yourselves together and edify one another, even, even so do you. Okay, we're to prepare. Notice, though, one of them is asleep, we're to, be, we're to watch and be sober. Be sober-minded, that is. Not just not literally not drunk, but sober-minded. Making decisions based on the facts, on the facts, the evidence, and the circumstances that we talked about when we talked about judges, the role, the role of judges. Sober, sober, knowing what's going on, not being like some drunk person. That's why drunk drivers kill people. They're not, they don't know what they're doing when they're driving. 
but we're to be aware and know what's going on and live accordingly. We're to be on the watch for these things. So we're to, put on, we're, we're, we're to have that faith and love like those tribulation saints who die later in, how, in the hope of salvation. Why? Because God has appointed us to wrath. He pointed the, this wrath is, is for the wicked, just like it was in the days of Lot and the days of Noah. But if we're but if we're if we're, if we're obeying him and righteous and doing what's right in his eyes like Lot and Noah did, we're gonna find grace in his and we're gonna obtain salvation. So we can prepare for the the way we're gonna prepare for the tribulation is to avoid the tribulation. Prepare to avoid it by being caught up in the rapture. And that's what we're to comfort each other with. That we that we will be spared it just like Noah was spared, just like Lot was spared and his family. Because we're going to be prepared for it. We're going to be prepared for the means of escape, just like Lot and Noah were. Now we're continue on in, 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 Deut in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 through 51. Watch you therefore, for you know what the Lord, what hour your Lord does come. Know this, the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come. He would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. Who is faithful and wise servant? Whom his son has made his Lord has made ruler over his household to give him meat in due season. Bless that servant whom, whom, his, whom his Lord when he comes find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Okay, notice, first of all, about that thief. If people knew when he was coming, they 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 would be ready, but we don't know, so what's the good men have to do? He has to be ready all the time. He has to be on the watch all the time. We got to be ready at all moments. And how do we do that? By being a wise and faithful servant. And if we are, notice, we're going to be made ruler. We're going to be made ruler. We're going to be, we're going to rule with him eventually. And we're going to be blessed. And who is it that's going to be blessed? Those that, those that the Lord finds doing what he told him to do when he comes. So you want to prepare for the tribulation. Be doing today the things Yeshua, Yahshua commanded us to do. Because that's who, that's who's going to be, that's who's, that's who's going to be blessed. Now we see this. Now we're, Yeshua tells Matthew 24, by the way, Mark 13 and Luke and Luke uh, 21 are parallel passages all about the tribulation in the days and how to prepare in those things. So now we're looking at that parallel passage there in Matthew in Mark 13 in verse 33 to 37, where we see another parable of Yeshua telling us what to do to prepare for the tribulation. Take heed, watch and pray for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is a man, is a man taking a far journey. Who left his house, he gave authority to his servants, and every man's work commanded the porter to watch. Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest suddenly come find, lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. Watch therefore, I say unto you, what I'm and what I'm sorry, and why I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Okay, again, be prepared. And notice again about giving the authority servants and, wor and work to do. And those who are what? Are blessed are the ones he finds doing it when he comes back. Those who are sleeping. And as we saw, those who are of the night sleep, those who don't know him sleep. They're not carrying out his business. They're off doing all the things the world does. And they're not, they're not, they're not, about, the, they're not about his business. So we're to watch and to pray because we can do nothing without him. We need his, we need him to help us with everything we do to accomplish it. So 
we're to be a, we're to be a, we're to live every day as if he's coming back if he, as if he's coming back today any moment that's how we prepare for the tribulation now we're going to look at Luke chapter 21 verse 33 to 36 and we're going to see how this how this preparation helps us with the tribulation Everything on earth shall pass away. My word shall not pass away. Take heed to yourselves. Listen, so anytime your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drink it and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unawares, as a snare shall come upon all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay, so what's the warning? You can count his words. Heaven and earth are going to be passed away, are going to be changed, but his words will not. And what's his, word, what's his word for us to take heed to ourselves, to be on the alert, to be watching out? Why? Not to be counted with overeating, be all, get all wrapped up in eating and drunkenness, not just literally getting drunk on, on alcohol, but also. Living, li li living, and not making so, not making decisions with a sober mind, making decisions out, out, of, out of our emotions and stuff. The cares of this life just getting too wrapped up in politics, in our jobs, and all these things to have time for the things of Him, and be and, and to keep us from watching where that's what's occupying our minds all the time, because it really is the battlefield of the mind. And if we let those things happen to us, that day is going to catch us unawares. We're, it's going to come upon, that day will come upon us the thief in the night. Because that's what's going to happen to the rest of the, to the world. It's going to come upon them. Everyone else, that's not, everyone except who? These people are watching and praying. And why? Why are we watching and praying? So we can be kind of worthy to escape these things. Just as Noah was in a lot more worthy for doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. They found favor. They found grace in his eyes, and and, and were lifted above this. Above, they were lifted off the earth. They were lifted above the destruction before the struck before God poured His destructive wrath down on the earth. So it's not every believer that's going to escape all these things. And notice this here: escape all. Some translations will say something like survive through. First of all, if you go look at those trans, if you go get a concordance. Look up those Greek words for escape and all in that concordance. Go look at those translations and see how they're translated. Everywhere else, they're, they're escaped. They're, the word that's translated escape here is translated escape or something that means the same sort of thing to flee from, whatever. And the word is translated all in every, in every other passage in those translations is escaped all or something like it, like everything except. So they're inconsistent in their own translation. It's not survived through. Also, you go, you get, you, you, you don't have to, you don't have to be like me and lived in Greece and be able to, and be able, uh, be able to speak, be able to speak, speak a little, you know, speaks and understand some Greek. You can get a concordance and look this up yourself. Escape means escape. The word translated escape means escape. The word translated all means all, like excluding none. This is an accurate translation. And those trans and, the, and, the, and the, the funny thing about those translations that, that ha, a lot of them have, that have survived uh, or, su su or survived through also have in Mark in Mark seventeen seven nineteen say thus saying Jesus declared all things clean and you and one of them's like like the, like uh, I think it's called the complete Jewish Bible although no yeah complete Jewish Bible I think it's the name and the people who use it. Say no, Jesus didn't wasn't saying we could eat pork and everything. Well, your translation says yes, 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 it does say that. And all, but 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 that translate that because it's built off a translation, and that expression is not found in one single ancient manuscript. So your translation is not trustworthy. It should tell you at the beginning. But you don't. But again, you can inspect yourself. It is escape all, and who's going to escape all? Only the worthy. And the worthy are who? Those who, those who are doing what they were told to do before Yeshua left. 
those who are living righteously in the, living or doing what's right in the eyes of God, like Noah and Lot did. They're the ones who have to find grace in the eyes of the Lord and escape his wrath. Now let's we're gonna wrap up here in our last section and we're and we're gonna look at some key things to do in this preparation to, to be counted among the worthy. And one of them's here in Proverbs 28, verse 26 through 28. He that trusts in his own heart is a fool. Whosoever walks wisely, he shall be delivered. He that gives to the poor shall not lack, but he that hides his eyes shall have many a curse. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. All right, first of all, that last statement there is definitely what describe the tribulation. When the wicked rise, the right people are going to hide, and we're told to hide and run away and not even go back into our house. But when those wicked perish, like the Antichrist, the righteous are going to increase. Because, well, they're going to be not the only ones left on the earth, for one thing. So, this definitely applies to the tribulation. But how do you do this? How do you prepare for it? If you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. If you got some plan to survive the tribulation that relies on your strength and you're building to hoard stuff up and build yourself a cabin in the woods and all this stuff, you are a fool. You're not walking wisely. But if you walk wisely, you're going to be delivered. And walking wisely, as we saw, means caring about and carrying out the commandments of Yeshua, going about what he told us to do. And in particular, it means doing this. He giving to the poor. Notice, if you give to the poor, the promise of God, you will not lack. And there's no, there's no condition here, it says, except during the tribulation. Even if you found yourself in the tribulation, and you give and you give to others what you have to help them, you will not lack. But what if you hoard your stuff up today? What if you what if you decide you're not, you don't got money to help the poor? The people of right now today who are going through great tribulation today, who are starving, our brothers and sisters all over the world. But you're hiding your eyes from them. So you can keep, so you can hoard up and make your tribulation survival kit. So you can, so you can get, so you can buy your seven years worth of of hydrated food, build your cabin out in the woods, etc. You're going to have a curse, many a curse. If you go to the tribulation, you're going to die. You're going to be cursed in so many ways, many a curse. So your efforts to save yourself are going to cause you to perish, as Yeshua said. You're going to. Your 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 plan your foolproof plan is making you into a fool. Ditch this completely and be instead trust God and use your 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 your, your time and use your treasure to help the poor instead. That's how you prepare for the tribulation to be delivered from it completely and not even have to bother with it. Let's look at another, 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 another clue about preparing for the tribulation, some more particulars. And we're going to go to Luke again, chapter 19 this time, verses 11 through 5, I mean 11 through 15. As they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable because because he was nigh Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God should appear, immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went to a far country to see for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called the servants, delivered them ten pounds, and said to them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message to him and said, Well, now have this man to reign after him. And it came to pass when he was returned to receive the kingdom and commanded these servants to call to him, who had given money, he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Okay. Now, why is he telling us? Because they think the kingdom of God is going to come immediately. He's not even, is de it, Yeshua is not even died been buried or resurrected yet they don't they even though he's told them before this point laid out i'm gonna betray except their sheep they got a sheep mindset at this point just can't get it so they think it's going to come right away he's telling them not the case that nobleman's himself to receive a kingdom on this earth 
That's when he's going to return. So he's going to go. To, he's going to go to the Father when the Father tells him to. He's going to return to get this kingdom. In the meanwhile, what are we supposed to be doing? Occupying, carry on his business, carry out the Great Commission. This is what we're supposed to be pouring our time, talents, and treasures into. Not trying to not trying to prepare for the tribulation in our own strength to somehow survive it. And who are these people that hate him? And will not have him? Most of the Jewish people. Of course, I say most. Luke was a Jew. The writers of the New Testament. But the majority of those people who ended up killing him, who ended up killing him. Those, those who were scattered and those rebels who will not accept this in the wilderness end up being destroyed. After the tribulation. Then if you go on to read he, he, of his servants, he rewards nine out of ten of them. Exact opposite of these rebels where nine out of ten are destroyed in the wilderness. So we need to be we need to be carrying out the great commission if we want to prepare for the tribulation. And lastly, prepare for the tribulation. Our last, our last particular we're going to look at detailed instruction is in, in here in Titus chapter two verses twelve through fourteen, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and pure himself unto him, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Okay, so what, how, how, how do we prepare for the tribulation? By denying ungodliness and worldly lust, not denying ungodliness exists in the world. Denying at any place in our lives and worldly lust. We are not to be consumed with the lust of the world, I mean, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life like the world. We're not to value what they value. We're not to be concerned. We're not to, we're not to be worried if we if someone has a nicer car than us, a newer, bigger, a bigger, better, newer house, or any of those things. In fact, we're told having food, clothing, and shelter to be content. We're to live soberly, to live to, to live in a right to live to live right thinking, not making decisions off the of judge, not making our, our decisions based off emotions, but off the facts, the off, off the facts, the evidence, and the circumstances, particularly the facts of the Word of God. To be righteous, to do what's to be, live a life in this that's right in the eyes of God, to live right in the eyes of God like Noah and Lot did, to be godly like they were, to reflect his character. And where in this present world? Not in the great by and by. And it's not once, it's not just like, went down an altar and I can just live however. No, no, it's today and every day. We're to be prepared every day if we want to miss the tribulation. If we want, if we want to, if we, if we want to prepare for the tribulation so we're raptured and not and just missing it altogether, we're to, every day we're to live righteously, soberly, and godly. Because what drives that? Looking for that blessed hope. We're watching for it. That blessing hope is, is the rapture. The appearing of his son is when he returns to the earth. The appearing of our great God is when heaven, after the thousand year reign of Messiah, when new heaven, new Jerusalem comes down and God now dwells with men. But that blessed hope is this rapture, this avoiding the tribulation altogether. And why, and why are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be peculiar, different than the rest of the world. People think we're strange to understand why we do the things. We don't, we don't value the things we do. We don't care about the things they care about. We're not concerned with those. What We're zealous of good works. We're zealous of doing things like taking care of the poor. Our time, our talent, our treasure belong to him. We were bought with a price. And he will take care of his own. He's not, he does not treat the righteous like the wicked. We have a blessed hope to be taken off this earth before the tribulation comes 
if we're prepared to, if we're prepared by doing the things he said that I've just discussed. That's all I have till next week. That's all I have. I should say, I should have to this, this coming up Sabbath. Until then, shalom.